Well, hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Justin Esri. I am an assistant professor at Rice University. Uh, welcome to the International Methods Colloquium. Uh, the IMC is a periodic online interactive seminar discussion on the application of quantitative statistical methodology to the social sciences, sponsored by Rice University and the National Science Foundation. Uh, this week, we're happy to welcome Kentaro Fukumoto from Gakushuin University. And I want to extend a special thanks for, uh, to Kentaro for coming today as uh, right now where he is in Japan, it's actually just past midnight, I think. So uh, he's, he's gone the extra mile to make the uh, IMC truly international. Uh, Kentaro's talk is, is going to last between uh, 30 to 40 minutes, after which point we will take questions from the audience. Uh, you can call in to ask a question on the air at our toll-free call in line, 1-855-667-8287. That's 1-855-NO-STATS. Uh, you can email questions to methods.colloquium at gmail.com. Uh, finally, you can also ask a question using the GoToWebinar Ask Question box that appears on the GoToWebinar control panel. For our viewers outside the United States, we recommend using the Ask Question box to ensure that we receive your questions immediately. Uh, a copy of the paper slideshow that goes along with this presentation, uh, the paper and slideshow rather, that goes along with this presentation is available in the handout box in your GoToWebinar window. Uh, and now I'd like to welcome Kentaro to the IMC. Welcome, Kentaro. Thank you for introduction, Justin. Uh, today's talk about uh, missing data under the match pair design, and I try to talk as practical as possible. And the uh, the match pair design is found in many applications, uh, including experiment. But even in the case of observational studies, if you use matching, it is actually the match pair design. And the merit of this design is balance of pretreatment pre variables. And two units in a pair share the exact or similar values of some match on variables. And one unit is treated, the other is controlled. Then, an estimate of the average treatment effect is the difference in means of outcomes between the treated and control groups. But the, when outcomes of some units are missing, which estimator should we choose practically and under what condition? That's the question of today's talk. And the first estimator is the unit-wise deletion estimator. Simply, we drop the missing units and use all the remaining units to derive, estimate the uh, ATE. But it is biased, as is well known. So the second estimator is the blockwise division estimator. There are lots of advocates because this estimator retain the um, balance of pretreatment pre variables. But there are some critiques as well, and they argue that this estimator is biased when attrition is a function of potential outcomes. So uh, um, the broker deletion produces balance of pretreatments, pre but not an unbiased estimate of the ADE. The third estimator is imputation, and there are two versions. The first one is single, single imputation, and the other is multiple imputation, such as Amelia. But again, here is a problem, because the assumption of missing at random is violated when attrition is a function of potential outcomes. So now I introduce potential outcome framework. An observation is identified by block B from 1 to B bar, and unit U is either 1 or 2. An outcome, y sub bu, is y of 1 if treatment is assigned or and received, or y of 0 otherwise. And the treatment status, t sub bu, is equal to 1 if treatment is assigned and 0 otherwise. And I assume random allocation, so one unit in the block is it, uh, treated and the other is controlled, and the, the probability of each state is one half. I also assume ignorability of a treatment assignment, so all four potential outcome of the uh, two units in the block is they are independent of 
treatment status of two units in the block. And in order to give you the sense of where the problem is, I give you the simplest example, uh, which uh, originally Dunning described in his 2011 paper. And there are two blocks. And this table shows um, uh, each row represents each unit. The first two units um, belong to the first block, and the, uh, the third and fourth row belong to the second block. And the first row is the first unit, the second row is the second unit in the first block. And the third row represents the first unit of the second block, and the fourth line shows the second unit in the uh, second block. And left half shows the potential outcome for control, and the right column shows the potential outcome for treatment. And if we know uh, all potential outcomes, then we can calculate the um, average of potential outcome. So the average potential average of potential outcome for control is equal to 2.5, and that of treatment is 3.5. So taking difference between them, we have um, true average treatment, treatment effect, which is equal to 1. This is the first example of observed outcomes. And in the first block, the first unit is treated, and the second unit is control. And in the second block, the first unit is control, and the uh, second unit is treated. And in this example, we can observe all four units. So the average of treatment outcome, uh, average of treated outcome is 2.5, and the average for control outcome is 3.5. So um, estimate of ATE is equal to minus 1. But this is a problematic second example of observed outcome. Now the first unit of the second block is treated, but it is not observed, actually it is missing. And the second unit of the second block is controlled. We can calculate the, uh, the average of um, outcome for control, which is equal to 2.5. But in the case of uh, treated units, now we cannot observe the, uh, the first unit of the second block. So the average of outcome for uh, treated treatment is simply equal to 2. And now the, um, the estimate of the ATE is equal to uh, minus 0 0.5. And oh, I, I, I forgot to say that this is the case of unitwise deletion estimator, because we just um, dropped the, uh, the first unit of the second block, which is missing. OK. So but the, if we use block graduation estimator, we drop not only the first unit of the second block, which is missing, but also the um, the other unit of the second block, a second unit of the same second block, this one. Then we calculate the uh, average of outcome for treat control group and treatment group, and we can have the estimate of ATE, which is equal to minus one in this case. And the the third estimator is uh, single imputation estimator. And in this case, uh, following the uh, class, classic imputation method, the, the missing value of the first unit of the second block is imputed by outcome of first unit in the first block plus uh, outcome of the second unit in the second block minus outcome of the uh, second unit in the uh, first block. Then uh, we can calculate the average of outcome for control group and treatment group. And we have the estimate of single imputation estimator, which is equal to minus 1. Here's a summary. So uh, depending on uh, estimator uh, which you, you use, we can have um, the different value of estimates. And the, now we, here uh, we go back to the first example where we observe all units. 
So uh, all three estimators lead to the same value, uh, same estimate value. This is the third example of the outcome. And now uh, uh, in the first block, the first unit is control and the second unit is traded. And the again, three estimators lead to different values of uh, AD estimate. Finally, this is a fourth example. And now the in the second block, the first unit is controlled and the second unit is traded. So we can observe all four units. So we can so all three estimators lead to the same estimate of ADE. Then we can calculate the bias of uh, three estimators. And actually, in this case, all the bias of all three estimators is equal to uh, minus 0 0.875. So the what matters is that um, blockwise, blockwise deletion estimator is actually biased. So the question of today's talk is, in general, or under what condition, which, mes which estimator is the best? So now I introduce a uh, potential response. Potential response in the case of treatment assigned is denoted by R of one. And it, it is equal to one if the unit responds or reports and zero if the unit is missing. Similarly, potential response in the case of control assigned is denoted by R of zero. And it is equal to one if the unit is respond and zero if it is missing. Then realized response R sub BU is equal to R of one if the unit is treated and R of zero if it is not treated. Next, I formalize um, three or some a few estimators as differences in weighted mean. And generic weight is denoted by W sub BU, which is either zero or one. And weighted mean operator is denoted by uh, E W circle Y. And it is defined as uh, weighted, weighted, uh, sum of weighted outcome over sum of weight. Then a generic differences in weighted mean estimator, tau hat, is a uh, weighted outcome for uh, treatment minus weighted outcome for control. Then the true average treatment effect, tau bar, is actually uh, defined in this way. Here, now weight for treatment and weight for control, uh, both are equal to one. And we use potential outcome y of one and y of zero. So then we can define estimators by using a different weight. The first one is uh, the full sample estimator, tau hat of f. Here, weight for treatment is equal to one if the unit is treated, and weight for control is equal to one if the unit is not treated. In the case of unitwise deletion estimator, weight for uh, treatment is equal to one if the unit responds and the unit is treated. And weight for control is equal to one if the unit responds, uh, responds and the unit is not treated. And the block validation estimator uh, is uses uh, um, these weights. So weight for treatment is equal to one if the unit is if the unit responds and the other unit of the same block also responds and the unit is treated. Weight for control is one if the unit is the if 
if the unit responds and the other unit of the same block responds as well and the unit is not treated. Finally, multiple imputation estimator is the, um, we actually make uh, five imputed, imputed data sets. And here we use the uh, weight, the same weight for, uh, for example, estimator. Actually, weight is equal to one. And we simply uh, take the average of um, treatment, treatment effect for imputed data set, such as Amelia. And then I decompose potential outcome into uh, six components. Uh, constant term alpha, and between block error term, within block error term, and if the unit is treated, uh, it also contains uh, average treatment effect tau bar, and between block heterogeneity of treatment effect, um, and within block heterogeneity of treatment effect. And this decomposition is unique provided that um, sum of error term or heterogeneity is equal to zero. Alpha is actually an uh, average of uh, potential outcome for control, and alpha of B is potential outcome for control of, of block B. Then between block error term is actually um, a potential outcome average of potential outcome for control of block B minus um, average of potential outcome for control of all blocks. And within block error term is equal to um, potential outcome of that unit minus average of potential outcome for control of block B. Same way, um, so tau of BU is actually individual treatment effect, and tau bar is average of uh, individual treatment effects for all units, and tau bar of B is average treatment effect of block B. Then between block heterogeneity of treatment effect is um, average of ATE of block B minus ATE, and the within block heterogeneity of treatment effect is uh, individual treatment effect minus ATE of, of block B. Okay, so uh, delta tau hat is um, estimation error, that is uh, tau hat minus tau bar through ATE. Then proposition one says that um, estimation error of the three um, estimators uh, expressed expressed uh, this way, and the um, the important thing is that estimation error of unitwise unitwise deletion estimator contains between block error term here, but the other two uh, block deletion estimator and full sample estimator does not contain uh, between block error term, and this proposition holds in any one trial without any assumption on treatment assignment. But we don't know the order, the order of the estimation error size among these three estimators. Okay, so um, I define um, perfect mass pair design where uh, within block error term is equal to zero and within block heterogeneity of treatment effect is also equal to zero. So in this case, uh, for example, if the first unit of the block is treated and the second unit is controlled, then um, the the second unit the second unit outcome is actually counterfactual. It's a complete counterfactual of the first unit of the for the control case. That's why I con call this uh, situation perfect. Then corollary one said that uh, when the match pair design is perfect, then estimation error of full sample estimator is equal to zero. So 
by contrast, if a match pair design does not succeed in covariance balance and is far from perfect, it would not be helpful anyway, even without missing values. Then, um, when the um, within block or within block heterogeneity of treatment effects are uh, equal to zero, that treatment effects are homogeneous in the sense that the uh, all individual treatment effects are the same. So corollary two said that in this situation, not only full sample estimator but also blockwise blockwise station estimator has no estimation error. So the implication is that if between block heterogeneity of a treatment effect is sufficiently small, then uh, it is more likely that um, the size estimation error size of blockwise relation estimator is smaller than the estimation error size of individualized relation estimator here. I skip this slide. Okay, now I'll talk about bias. So um, bias is actually an expectation of estimation error. And proportion two says um, bias of these three estimators can be expressed this way. And the the important thing is that block wise Blockwise relation estimator is actually biased. Okay, so um, so next I I consider the case where uh, potential outcome, uh, potential uh, response is does not depend on the uh, treatment status. So R of one is equal to R of zero. So in this case, um. Bias of between block estimator, uh, between block um, block radiation estimator, does not contain um, between block error term. So you know a, uh, the bias of unitwise radiation estimator contains a between block error term here, but uh, block radiation estimator does not contain a between block error term here. So good examples of the situation are a blind test or subliminal stimuli. Because subjects don't know treatment status, so they cannot change their response pattern depending on the uh, treatment status. The other case of interest is um, potential response is equal to the uh, equal between the two units of the same block, and in this case. Uh, not only uh, between block, not only a uh, block radiation estimator, but also uh, unitwise deletion estimator does not contain the uh, within block error term or within block heterogeneity of treatment, uh, treatment effects. So for instance, if Marshall variables such as DNA completely explain the missing data mechanism, Either two units or no units in a pair, such as twin, should respond if treatment is assigned or control is assigned. And the, if the um, match pair design is perfect, then again, um, bias of uh, local radiation asymmetry or uh, unit validation estimator does not contain uh, within block uh, factors here. But the but unfortunately, even under the perfect mass pair design, um, block validation estimator is biased unless treatment effects are homogeneous. So now I come back to the uh, example which I described at first. I decompose potential outcome into um, some parts, components. Then um, we we found we find that we know that uh, between block error is small. 
So the multiple design is far from perfect in the first place. So poor performance of the block validation estimator results in that example, but it's not general. So we can reduce sources of bias by either design or implementation. And by design, uh, we can balance pretreatment variables which decide potential outcome or potential response. And by implementation, we can make subjects blind to treatment status. OK, so uh, when potential outcome is independent of a potential response, um, so this is the case of the ignorability, then um, initial uh, deletion estimator is unbiased. In a similar way, if potential outcome is independent of a potential response times potential response of the other unit of the same block, this is a um, vulnerability of block response. In this case, um, block validation estimator is unbiased. But I'm afraid these situations are very really rare. So um, finally, I show you two applications of these uh, estimators. And the first application is Mexican Universal Health Insurance Program, uh, Seguro Popular de Salud, or SPS. There are 50 pairs of health clusters, and treatment is encouragement to sign up to this program, and outcome is catastrophic health expenditure. This application is a good example for this project because the exact intention of the original multi-pair design is protection against losing clusters or some uh, geographical areas without losing balance of covariates. Also, unbalanced response is possible. Arguably, um, treated health clusters with bad outcome have incentive to be missing, while controlled health clusters with a good outcome might be missing. Fortunately for them, um, they can observe all units. So here, um, by simulation, I make n percent of units missing by weighted random sampling. So weight is calculated, calculated this way. And the here um, delta of B um, super B is actually a block wise factors, estimated block wise factors, which include uh, between block error term and between block heterogeneity. And rho represents um, direction and strength um, of the relationship between these block wise factors and um, missing probability. So um, I evaluate the uh, normal distribution at this value. And if the unit is uh, treated, I use um, block wise, I uh, begin block factor here. And but the, if the unit is not treated, I use minus a negative uh, between block factors. So uh, response pattern is unbalanced between um, uh, between the um, block fractures, a positive or negative. And the percentage of missing ranges from 10% to 50%. And I simulate missing units uh, 1,000 times and estimate average treatment effects by uh, these four estimators, the so unit-wide deletion estimator, block-wide deletion estimator. And the third one is failed block-wide deletion estimator. The goal the goal of this estimator is that um, I want to know if when when the when the blocking it is not uh, when the block when the blocking uh, fails. In that case, uh, the uh, balance of covariates uh, is not so good. So, uh, in order to uh, make such situation, I rematch units randomly and I apply block validation estimator uh, again. 
The first estimator is multiple imputation estimator, and I use 17 pretreatment pre covariate. Here's the result. X-axis shows the row uh, that is a relationship between between block factor and missing probability of uh, treatment case. And the y-axis shows the uh, estimate, estimated treatment effect. And these uh, thick dots and thick line show the case of uh, block validation estimator. And actually, the true ATE is false here. So it is almost the same as the, um, the point estimate of block validation estimator. So this estimator is unbiased. This gray zone and the, the, this um, thin dotted line shows the case of initialized relational estimator. So uh, this estimator is really biased. And also this shaded, oh, this shaded area is the case of uh, uh, multiple imputation estimator. So surprisingly, or uh, surprisingly, uh, multiple, multiple imputation does not succeed well here. It is almost in between between the uh, localization estimator and the initialization estimator. And finally, this thin line and the uh, this axis represents a case of a failed localization estimator, and it is actually biased. As as biased as uh, initialization estimator. So this shows that if blocking um, does not succeed in the first place, then blockization estimator does not succeed either. Now this uh, figure shows uh, the now x-axis shows the uh, proportion of missing from 10% to 50%, and the y-axis shows the uh, treatment effects. And again, um, block validation estimator is unbiased, and unit validation estimator is very biased, and um, multiple imputation is almost come between these two estimators. Okay, so uh, due to time limits, now 35 minutes have passed, so I skip this uh, second application and go to conclusion. Okay. So practical advice of mine is to, to use the block, block validation estimator. And it is free of uh, between block error. And it is more likely to have smaller estimation error or bias than the unit validation estimator. When treatment effects are almost homogeneous and the design almost achieves the balance of potential outcomes, or the design almost achieves balance of potential responses, or implementation almost makes subjects blind to treatment status. And the um, block validation estimator is usually better than the multiple imitation estimator, unless variables used for imitation are more informative than much better uh, design. OK, but here's one caveat. Uh, the block validation estimator can be biased even under the perfect match pair design, unless treatment effects are homogeneous. OK, so that's the end of the, my uh, presentation. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Kentaro. Uh, now, uh, at this point, Kentaro is available to take your questions. You can call in to ask a question on the air at our toll-free call-in line, one 667 8287. Uh, that's 1-855-NO-STATS. Uh, you can also email questions to methods.colloquium at gmail.com. Finally, uh, you can ask a question using the GoToWebinar Ask Question box that appears on the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, for our viewers outside the United States, uh, we recommend that you use the Ask Question box uh, to ensure that we receive your questions immediately. And uh, while we're waiting for some questions that come from the audience, uh, I have a, a few. So um, if I was going to build a, a, a Bayesian hierarchical model and I had uh, missing data, what I would usually uh, think is, well, my first 
stage would be to essentially build an imputation model inside of the Markov chain, right? So you predict the missing outcomes as a function of the other variables. And then if I believe that missingness is systematic, then I could build a missingness model and then the missingness model could be used as a, as a part of predicting the expected value of the, of the outcome or whatever. And it sounds like what you're saying is that that, uh, that approach is going to be problematic. So is there something specific to, just to make sure I'm interpreting that correctly, is there something specific to the, the matching design um, that, that makes that problem worse or, or is it is it inadvisable to take that approach in, in including in other kinds of parametric models? Yeah, um, actually, it depends. It depends on the quality of uh, of uh, uh, much long variables and the quality of the variables which are used for, uh, you know, imputation or you know, uh, missing mechanism or something. And the and so it depends on the uh, application or data set. And the okay, so actually I skipped the, uh, the second application, and it is oh um, this application is the um, you know Lalon or the Hijababa famous dataset of the uh, matching, and actually now um, and that's the here I use the same matching variables for imputation as well, so theoretically um, imputation. Imputation should have the uh, same quality of the, you know, matching or uh, block, uh, blocking design. But the, you know, um, once we, once we have the uh, truly perfect uh, blocking, then, you know, block units actually the two units in the same block have much more information than covariate. So in that case. Uh, Using blocking information is much better than uh, imputation or uh, simply using the covariate, which, which you know, predict the uh, missing mechanism or something. So let's take the observational part out of it. Let's let's suppose that there was an experiment, and um, for some reason, uh, normally experiments don't have this problem, but for some reason, um, uh, people were um, we're dropping out, or basically, we're, we're we're having missing outcomes as a as a part of the process. You didn't, they didn't report their outcomes or something. So I have yeah. random assignment to treatment and control. So yeah. in other words, and I can maybe block on, you know, I can block on certain attributes to increase efficiency. But even if I just take the whole group, I expect the groups to be comparable. And then I yeah. see systematic, uh, what do you call it? Systematic missingness. Um, maybe in one of the groups, maybe in both of the groups, and I, I have reason to believe that that uh, missingness is probably correlated with the value of their potential outcomes. Yeah. So what you're saying is what I ought to do is not try to impute what those missing values would be on the basis of something I can see about the experimental subjects. What I ought to do is just match them with people that are like them in the other group and then drop both. Yeah. yeah. But the yeah, that's why I said, but it depends, actually, again, it depends on the quality of uh, uh, blocking and the amputation. So, for example, um, in the, okay, I, you know, uh, in the application, I show the failed block validation estimator where um, the balance of covariates are really uh, poor. In that case, uh, block validation estimator is worse. Actually, than the uh, multiple multiple estimator, or um, actually as bad as block a uh, unitwise deletion estimator. So um, yeah, so it it nails down the um, you know um, yeah quality of uh, covariates. Well, the reason I'm I'm trying to sort of uh, ask questions about this and clarify it is, it really flies in the face of um, it, virtually everything I think I know about how to deal with missing data. Now I know that if the missing are, you know, uh, if the missing data are not at random, right, or and not it's not modelable, then right, you're 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 in bad shape. But in cases of data that are where the missingness is at least modelable, I was under the impression that these approaches that involve imputation either of the missingness, using the missingness as a variable or even just on the covariates, were going to do quite well. 
And so I'm wondering, um, you know, is what I'm basically wondering is is your is your argument that all those things that we that are in you know <laughs> have been published and are in various statistical textbooks, we ought to be ignoring that and we ought to be doing something else. Um, you know, you know, multiple imputation or any any you know uh, missing mechanism prediction uh, based on some model. So they kind of introduce or add some assumption or modeling on the experiment or you know existent um, data set. But the uh, on the other hand, if we simply use the uh, localization estimator, uh, we do not add any assumption or we simply use the uh, you know existent data set assumption. So um, if the if the assumption or model you introduce or you add is good enough, in that case, um, you know, uh, imputation or uh, missing mechanism prediction, uh, such as you know, better model something, will be better than uh, localization estimator. But we don't know. We we don't know. Um, we don't know whether uh, modeling or assumption is correct or not. So my sense is that um, simply relying on the uh, design is much more uh, reliable. That's why. That, that's what I think. So, what about uh, you're you're talking mostly about missingness on the dependent variable, right? This is yes. missingness of outcomes. What's going to happen in the very uh, common event that you have missingness of both outcomes and of covariates? Actually, the situation is uh, beyond the scope of this research. Um, yeah, I just deal with the um, missing of the outcome, and the yeah. Um, so, so the typical situation of this um, research is you know, experiment. So when you um, when you you know collect a subject, you should know the uh, value of covariates, and after that you will you know uh, after some in time interval you will observe uh, or you miss outcome of the uh, subject. So yeah, the situation you describe is you know uh, beyond the scope of this research. I'm curious about that because in observational research, that's the most common scenario, right? You have missing yeah. that goes across all the variables. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, in that sense, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so my talk is kind of limited to the you know part of the situation. In part, in particular, when, but in particular, in the case of the observational studies, yeah. Well, I have a question about um, the S demand. So. Um, as, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, there is, there is, has been and continues to be a prolif proliferation of S demands in the causal inference literature. So you're estimating the ATE, or maybe you're estimating the ATT, or maybe you're estimating uh -huh. the late, or maybe you're estimating the, the Don Green, a case or something. There are all these different yeah. estimates, and they all have yeah. to do with, you know, basically who's in the, who's in the um, matching sample. And I'm wondering if, uh, so you mentioned that your procedure will be only effective, the blockwise deletion procedure will only be effective when there's homogeneous uh, tra treatment effects, but that would only be, I think that would only be true in terms of its ability to estimate the ATE. There would be an alternative uh, uh, estimate. You could call it the, was it the average observable treatment effect? I don't know. Make up, <laughs> make up your favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm wondering if, if, if that. First of all, if you agree with me that that estimate would be something that that you could get, and secondly, if you did get it, would it be something that would be interesting or informative to to know? Yeah. Um. Actually, yeah. Don Green uh described the uh always reporters AT or something. So, mm -hmm. you know, some some uh some you know, version of the uh, local AT. And right. the, but the, still, I think the book validation estimator it had some merit because, because, um, here, yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, when I talk about estimation error, I, um, I simply use, you know, one trial. So we, I, I do not see, you know, expectation. And the, even in that case, uh, book validation estimator does not contain uh, between-block error term. The reason is very simple, because 
you cancel out, uh, you know, between block error uh, uh, by using the two units of the same block. So it is always the case. Uh, it is always the case, you know, um, what what kind of estimate you want to know. So uh, I have not yet um, examined in details, but my sense is that um, what I talk today probably holds even the other, in, even in the case in the case of the cases of the other estimate as well. But uh, I'm not sure at this moment. Yeah, but the the you know um, intuitive mechanism is intuitive mechanism is important, I think. So so basically, you know, merit of the block radiation estimator is you know, cancellation of the you know, between block error component uh, by using the two units in the same block. Well, the reason I brought that up is because if, if I could assume that treatment effects were homogeneous, uh, lots of things would be as would be very would be able to estimate the ATE in a variety of conditions. So, for example, instrumental variables models would be estimates of the ATE because the L8 the late would be the same as the ATE. Yeah. Um, and and so you've that assumption is very strong, and it's one that the literature, at least in my reading of it, has not been willing to make. Um, they they often say, well, we have to basically we have to make some. We have to tell you what this is going to mean in cases that are not that favorable, right? That are that are not good, and so in cases where you do have homogeneity in the treatment effect, are going to be the most common cases. But it strikes me that you still, um, the thing that you get out of a blockwise deletion estimator still might be of interest. So, for example, if I'm going to intervene in the labor market in some way, um, it might be relevant, you know, the treatment effect on the people who stay in the labor market might be relevant as opposed to, you know, um, there, it might cause some people to drop out, um, but maybe maybe that's okay or maybe we, we can neglect the effect on those people. Yeah, um, you know, um, e even though the treatment effects are not, you know, they are perfectly homogeneous, but the you know, heterogeneity is not so large. In that case, you know, uh, the the merit of the superiority of the vocalization instrumenter remains. But the I, um, but, but the I don't come up with the any situation where unit validation estimator is better than block validation estimator. And the unfortunately I think it is very difficult to formalize the uh, performance of uh, multiple imputation because the you know their behavior depends on the uh, quality of core values. So um, I don't know; it is impossible or not, but at least it's really challenging. You know, it might be the case that um, you could, you probably could estimate a treatment effect not on the dependent variable but on the probability of dropping out. So in other words, you could uh, perhaps um, report two statistics. One of them is what's the effect of the treatment on causing people to drop out <laughs> and what's and then conditional on not dropping out, what's the treatment effect on those who don't drop out. And th those two things combined might be uh, uh, in informative uh, in the sense that, um, uh, how do I put this? It's it. Those two things combined might be as informative as the ATE, if that makes sense. Yeah, but actually, that's important. I think. Um, and they also, if the researcher knows such, you know, probabilities or missing or something uh, in advance, actually before they um, observe outcome, then they can use or they should be. They should use such information for blocking, actually. Um, like uh, you know, this one. So in the proposition, I described the situation where uh, potential response, uh, potential response is the same between the two units in the same block. And in that case, um, the size of bias decreases. Um, so and it is really uh, helpful helpful for researchers. So um, so if you 
you know, some, you know, you know theory or covariate which contribute to the, uh, which, 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 you know, uh, enable us to know the uh, probability of missing, then I think we should, uh, we should match on that those variables when you make uh, when you make a block. So uh, we have a question. Uh, so I'm going to read this off here. Is there any? There are two questions actually. So the first question is: Is there any way to evaluate the quality of matching covariates in order to make a decision about whether to use matching with uh, 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 with blockwise deletion or uh, other approaches? Um, I haven't. I've never thought of that, um, but the, my instant response is that it's really difficult. I think. Um, I think it's a, you know, it's almost the same as the, you know, we we always we we don't know, you know, uh, whether model is per, model is good or not. So. That's why we rely on the design. So, yeah, my sense is that it's really um, difficult. Well, yeah. and then sort of a follow-up question to that. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, Gary King was on on the uh, on the IMC, mm -hmm. telling us that um, you should never use propensity score matching. You should always use coarse and exact matching. Mm -hmm. uh, does the algorithm, you know, how, how is, is there any interaction between the algorithm you use to perform the matching and uh, your point about using blockwise deletion being better? I have not yet, I have not yet examined, but actually the, I think much inform I use um, employs um, it's a um, not protein score, but the uh, Mahalomi's distance. So I think it's the uh, same as the uh, Gary algorithm as well. And the so the what matter is you know uh, balance of um, covariates. I, I mean uh, balance of covariates predicting outcome and the uh, potential response. So. I don't think it depends on the uh, matching algorithm. Simply, um, how should I say? Um, it's a matter of the uh, balance of you know covariate. So I think you know following the Gary's argument, then you know uh, you know yeah probably property score matching is not so good. Yeah. All right. Well. Um... Kintaro, we're, we're about out of time, so thank you very much for uh, for presenting. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all we have time for this week, so I want to uh, uh, express my thanks for, for staying up late, uh, <laughs> even though you're all the way, uh, 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 the time zone difference is quite significant between here and there. Yeah. Uh, I also want to uh, invite you to, to take part next week. Uh, uh, we have a talk at noon Eastern, 11 Central, by Zach Jones of Penn State University entitled uh, Data Mining as Exploratory Data Analysis. Uh, you can go to our website, www.methods-colloquium.com, to download his paper and so for more details about the talk. So, Kentaro, thank you very much. Thank you. Yep, I'll see everyone next week. Thank you.